metabolic path, metabolic pathway I am interested in. And it's uh, pretty interesting that uh, both bilirubin and bile acids uh, share common, let's say, denominating um, um, background. Uh, and they are also interrelated. Uh, so my first slide is not very interesting, but I need to, to show it. So uh, it's a simplified uh, biosynthetic pathway of bile acids. And as you may see, uh, the precursor of bile acids is cholesterol, as everyone knows. And we have two primary bile acids, which are cholic acid and kinodeoxycholic acid. And as you may see, cholesterol is having only one hydroxyl group, whereas uh, uh, cholic acid has uh, three, uh, three uh, hydroxyl groups and shortened uh, uh, side chain with carboxyl group at the end. Um, in contrast, kinodeoxycholic acid, the second primary bile acid, uh, is lacking uh, hydroxyl in this position uh, called 12, C12. Uh, uh, when bile is transported into the uh, gut lumen, uh, there is a, a metabolic pathway within the gut lumen uh, provided by intestinal bacteria, which dehydroxylate uh, uh, these primary bile acids into secondary bile acids called deoxy and lithocholic acids which are much more toxic than those primary ones. And, uh, uh, oops. and uh, we then have a so-called tertiary um, bile acids, uh, such as orthodeoxycholic acid, which is almost uh, identical to kinodeoxycholic acid here. Uh, the only difference is that this is so-called uh, beta epimer of kinodeoxycholic acid, but this uh, tiny change makes a big uh, difference in biological properties. So uh, what are the biological effects uh, of bile acids? Uh, so uh, we can uh, divide them into several, let's say, stages. Uh, at the stage of the whole organism, uh, it's primarily elimination and homeostasis of, uh, of uh, cholesterol within the human body. Um, I should mention that what is uh, in blue color is, uh, let's say, uh, the so-called standard or classical biological effects which are taught for decades. And those uh, which are written in red are those new or novel, novel uh, biological effects which have been uh, discovered, uh, let's say, during the last two decades. So um, at the stage of the liver cell, uh, bile acids are responsible for so-called bile acid dependent bile flow. In other words, uh, without bile acids, uh, there would be no bile flow or, or only minimal bile flow. So they are responsible for so-called cholerases. So they also have mitogenic effects, um, which are important for liver regeneration. And they also regu regulate the gene expression via uh, nuclear receptors. I will talk about this uh, later on. And they are also uh, very important for so-called intermediary metabolism of, of uh, the major uh, energy sources such as, uh, such as um, sugar saccharides or fats. At the level of biliary tract, uh, they are responsible for uh, solubilization of, uh, of non-polar substances such as cholesterol and various xenobiotics. They also have anti-microbial effects. They stimulate bicarbonate secretion by cholangiocytes. This is also one of the uh, mechanisms uh, which is uh, nowadays being tested for treatment of, for example, primary sclerosing uh, cholangitis. They also have mitogenic effects on cholangiocytes. At the level of small intestine, they are responsible for solubilization of dietary lipids, including lipase activation and uh, uh, also their protection from proteolytic enzyme degradation. Uh, they are solubilized also vitamins, um, uh, which uh, are soluble in fats and also lipophilic drugs. Uh, again, also here, they have antimicrobial effects. Uh, they again uh, regulate gene expression 
uh, in yellow sites, and they are responsible uh, for fibroblast growth factor 19 secretion by yellow sites, which is a factor regulating bile acid synthesis in the liver. They are also responsible for uh, GLP-1 production via this cytoplasmic uh, receptor. I will talk about this uh, uh, in more detail later on. At the level of large intestine, they modulate electrolyte secretion. Uh, what is, um, uh, what is uh, interesting um, uh, is um, uh, the dichotomy between um, uh, between high cholesterol in blood and high cholesterol or high bile acids within the gut lumen. Because we know that uh, subjects with APOE2 uh, genotype, uh, they have hypercholesterolemia uh, and uh, they, uh, uh, whereas uh, those who have E4 genotype, um, um, so so they have a, a completely different phenotype and, and uh, 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 those having uh, high bile acids within the gut lumen have higher risk of colorectal cancer uh, because of uh, these uh, secondary bile acids which are formed through uh, the microbial conversion of primary bile acids. So, uh, this needs to be taken into account when analyzing also, uh, also the risks of uh, these, uh, uh, these diseases. At the level of brown adipose tissue, they stimulate thermogenesis via T3, T4, and also uh, via uh, TGR5 cytoplasmic uh, receptor. So, uh, how about those metabolic functions? So the first, uh, uh, let's say, uh, big interest was uh, given to this topic uh, at the ASLD meeting in 2010, <clears throat> when one of the, the key lectures was uh, given by Johan over one of the, uh, the world experts in this field. And uh, since then, uh, several uh, symposia um, have been taking place all over the world. Uh, the last one uh, was before the, the COVID pandemic uh, in, in Monterey in 2017. And uh, all these uh, facts just uh, uh, stress the importance of this uh, uh, metabolic uh, uh, pathways uh, for, for um, uh, let's say, uh, the human body functions. So can we... Um, call bile acids as endocrine molecules. Uh, so uh, many people thinks, uh, think that uh, we really can. Um, the reason is that they behave as, as hormonal substances. Uh, this is a picture from uh, some textbook uh, uh, on endocrinology showing the, the cell, uh, cell membrane or plasma membrane and nucleus. And as you may see, hormone is binding uh, to the receptor which is located either on plasma membrane or within the uh, cytoplasm or, or nucleus. And uh, bile acids uh, really can act uh, in a distant uh, uh, tissues and organs and cells uh, and acting uh, uh, via their binding to, to specific receptors. Uh, if you look at this uh, paper by David Mengelsdorf group, they, uh, in 19s, uh, they were able to identify uh, the specific nuclear receptor for bile acids, which is known now as FXR, Farnesoid X receptor. And uh, uh, David Mengelsdorf also published a great paper in Science 2001, um, uh, having this sexy title, uh, opening the X files of nuclear receptors uh, uh, for lipid physiology, because um, we have um, a lot of so-called orphan receptors, meaning that these receptors do not have their ligands. And uh, uh, two, uh, two, two decades ago, uh, there were many of these, um, uh, uh, these uh, orphan receptors, and FXR was one of them, and uh, they were able to identify bile acids as their, uh, as their um, ligands. So, uh, if we will look at uh, this picture, it shows uh, on the left side, uh, it shows, uh, it shows uh, the intestinal lumen with bile pillars. 
And at the top of the villus, you can see two types of the cells, enterocyte, this is villus, uh, this is enterocyte. And uh, you may see at the, um, at the epical uh, uh, pole, uh, transporter, which is called ASBT or illal bile acid transporter. Bile acids are uh, bound to this uh, receptor and then uh, they are transported into the nucleus, uh, bind to the FXR receptor, and they uh, uh, provide uh, uh, secretion of FGF19, as I mentioned before. And then we have also enteroendocrine L cell, uh, which have TGR5 receptor, which is depicted here. And bile acids, again, can bind to this receptor and uh, through the, um, let's say, a little bit complicated pathway, uh, they can um, increase GLP-1 secretion. What is GLP-1? It's a glucagon-like peptide 1, uh, as I said, produced by enteroendocrine L cells in distal ileum. And together with this gastric inhibitory peptide, uh, they are classified among so-called incretins, uh, which are the, the hormones responsible for postprandial insulin secretion. Uh, and they are also, or GLP is also a target for pharmacological modulation. We know from the diabetology uh, uh, incretin mimetics, uh, such as uh, GLP receptor agonist, uh, the example is uh, uh, exenatid, or incretin enhancers, which are inhibitors of these enzymes. Um, and these drugs are called gliptins, uh, very popular in, in uh, uh, diabetology nowadays. Oops. Um, so this is uh, uh, a picture showing uh, the target tissues and organs of GLP-1, as, as you may see, it's no, not only uh, uh, heart and, uh, and vessels, but also, uh, also liver, uh, muscles, uh, uh, pancreas, uh, also gastrointestinal tract and brain. Uh, uh, this is a picture showing how bile acids can bind uh, to different receptors, uh, which are um, uh, localized in different organs and tissues. And as you may see in these uh, squares, there are uh, abbreviations of, of various receptors. All of them uh, have some affinity for bile acids. And as you may see, there is an organ and tissue dependent uh, distribution of these, these uh, various uh, receptors. And uh, through all of these, uh, bilirubin can exert, bilirubin, sorry, bile acids can exert their uh, biological effects. Um, so uh, this is a pretty busy table showing uh, how bile acids can influence lipid glucose uh, metabolism and uh, uh, as a result can, can affect energy homeostasis. Again, um, you may see uh, cellular targets of bile acids, which are uh, uh, in the second column, there are different organs um, and there's a specific function. There is, uh, let's say, uh, it just demonstrates the versatility of bile acids uh, in their action. Yes. Uh, so uh, how bile acids can, can affect cardiovascular uh, system? There are direct effects. Uh, there are effects on individual heterogenic factors, and uh, there are indirect effects of bile acids uh, by ameliorating other conditions which are associated with cardiovascular diseases, such as uh, energy homeostasis, uh, uh, effects on adiposity and development of obesity, diabetes, and non alcoholic steatohepatitis. Uh, so, uh, we know very long that the bile acids have uh, uh, some effects on, on cardiovascular functions uh, because uh, we know that cirrhotic patients uh, can suffer from elevated uh, uh, bile acids uh, in terms of uh, damage of their heart and vessels. We know cirrhotic, so-called cirrhotic cardiomyopathy, uh, which is caused by what I just described. Uh, we also know so-called ICP patients, which are uh, females with so-called uh, intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. And we know that uh, during this disease, 
there is um, uh, elevation of endogenous bile acids in the circulation of mothers. And these bile acids can uh, penetrate through the placental barrier into the circulation of fetuses. And they have negative chronotropic defects and they can cause even asystolia. Uh, and uh, uh, because of that, we know that, uh, that bile acids can really um, affect uh, um, even these, uh, these mechanisms. We also know that uh, patients with cardiovascular diseases have low secretion and production of bile acids. Uh, there are several papers by these uh, authors from Israel. Uh, it's uh, another evidence that bile acids uh, really influence cardiovascular uh, functions. Uh, so this is a review paper showing how um, bile acids regulate cardiovascular functions. And this is a, uh, a figure from that paper. And as you may see, there are at least four uh, cellular populations, which are important uh, in, um, let's say, mediating the effects of bile acids. The, uh, the first uh, population is population of cardiomyocytes, then vascular endothelial cells, uh, vascular smooth muscle cells, and then macrophages. And as you can, uh, uh, on this, bile acids can, uh, can uh, modulate the function of ionic channels, uh, they can bind to TGR5, uh, uh, TGR5 receptor, which is also present in cardiomyocytes. Uh, they can uh, bind to FXR, nuclear receptor, which is also present in uh, cardiomyocytes. They can even affect uh, muscarinic receptors. Uh, they can even affect beta adrogenic, adrogenic uh, receptors. Um, uh, you, you may ask how it's possible uh, that uh, bile acids may have so wide, um, let's say, um, substrate uh, uh, specificity. Uh, look at this uh, picture showing that uh, 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 a chain of the uh, side chain of the, of the bile acids resembles um, uh, a part of the acetylcholine, uh, which means that uh, it's also a subset of this paper that uh, bile acid can, can uh, uh, behave as, as uh, ligands of uh, these muscarinic uh, uh, receptors. So uh, bile acids also may influence heterogenic factors. There are several, um, let's say, uh, kinds of evidence uh, for example, uh, we know that activation of FXR decreases uh, triglycerides uh, and uh, has also effects on cholesterol metabolism. They can, uh, they can uh, reduce uh, uh, macrophage inflammation because TGR5 receptor is present also uh, on macrophages. They can inhibit platelet activation uh, by uh, um, action of, uh, let's say, FXR um, agonism. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the bile acids interfere with energy utilization. They have effects on adiposity and obesity development, and also pathogenesis of diabetes and non alcoholic steatohepatitis. So uh, these are um, some of the mechanisms. Uh, this is brown adipose tissue, uh, muscles, and intestinal cells. Uh, so uh, in, uh, in adipose tissues and uh, muscles, um, it can increase oxidative phosphorylation. And by that, uh, uh, they can um, uh, increase energy expenditure. And uh, 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 this is also potentiated uh, by increased levels of GLP-1 produced by intestinal L cells uh, upon exposure uh, to bile acids. Uh, so, uh, we also know that there is negative relationship between serum bile acids and uh, thyroid stimulating hormone levels. Uh, and thyroid hormones are very important in, in um, uh, energy expenditure. Uh, there is also a very interesting case report published in 2008 uh, showing that uh, uh, in a patient uh, with Graves disease, which was resistant to conventional therapy, uh, this disease um, uh, was uh, 
dramatically uh, ameliorated uh, by uh, administration of cholesterol, which is a uh, bile acid uh, sequestrant in the intestinal lumen, showing the interrelationship between, between um, thyroid hormones and bile acid metabolism. So uh, this is uh, another picture showing uh, what I just mentioned, already mentioned, that um, uh, that the GR5 is present in intestinal uh, L cells, also in brown adipose tissue, but also on macrophages having anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, so just to summarize these, uh, uh, these metabolic effects uh, on the uh, level of, uh, of uh, intestine and liver, you may see that bile acids activate FXR in the intestine uh, also, TGR5 with production of GLP-1 um, by uh, agonistic effects on FXR, they stimulate production of HGF-19. Um, bile acids, uh, which are um, reabsorbed, can activate TGR5 in adipose tissue, uh, also in the muscles, uh, and also uh, FXR in the liver. Uh, activation of FXR in the liver tissue activates a multiple uh, multiple uh, pathways uh, which have a strong metabolic impact uh, as a result. So these are some unpublished data from our lab when we uh, just took uh, uh, healthy subjects and we measured uh, uh, by GCMS uh, uh, serum bile acids. And as you may see, uh, uh, the higher BMI is the higher bile acids concentrations are. Uh, so, uh, how can we um, affect bile acid metabolism in terms of uh, use their biological effects uh, in the treatment of, uh, of uh, metabolic diseases? So there are several approaches. We can, uh, we can use bile acids uh, in per se. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned on my first slide, we have uh, several biochemical entities we have unconjugated, conjugated bile acids, uh, uh, all natural ones, as well as uh, uh, semi-synthetic or synthetic bile acids. And uh, there are uh, studies, uh, both experimental as well as human, showing that uh, bile acids have really beneficiary effects um, uh, on the many, many uh, uh, pathways uh, implemented in, in pathogenesis of these metabolic diseases. We can also use bile acid sequestrants, as I mentioned, in, uh, as an example of cholesterol used in this Graves um, uh, disease patient. Um, by sequestrating bile acids in the gut lumen, uh, there is a feedback, a multiple feedback mechanism, um, uh, which uh, uh, can result in better glycemic control. Uh, we can also use uh, these intestinal bile acid reuptake inhibitors, uh, which inhibit the uh, LL bile acid transporter, and uh, they just inhibit reabsorption of bile acids from the gut lumen, and they act in similar manner as bile acid sequestrants. Uh, we can use metformin, which is a drug number one for treatment of diabetes mellitus type two. Uh, and uh, uh, it's very in interesting to note that uh, Metformin uh, also inhibits uh, LL bile acid transporter um, and uh, partially interrupting enteropathic circulation of bile acids. It also uh, increases uh, uh, serum GLP-1 and even have beneficiary effects on gut microbiota. There are multiple natural products which behave uh, as modulators of FXR and other nuclear as well as uh, a cytoplasmic TGR5 receptor. Um, there is a big space for use of probiotics and prebiotics uh, because uh, uh, intestinal microbiota uh, profoundly influence metabolism of bile acids uh, within the intestinal lumen. Uh, I mentioned synthetic bile acid mimetics. Um, uh, I will mention them uh, on the next slide in more detail. We also have um, uh, some uh, um, synthesized uh, uh, molecules such as fatty acids uh, um, uh, conjugated to bile acids. Uh, this is the commercial uh, uh, name of the drug. 
which was shown uh, to, to reduce hepatic steatosis. Also, um, um, polyunsaturated fatty acids can modulate bile acid metabolism by decreasing bile acid synthesis, increasing the dairy secretion uh, of um, uh, bile acids and decreasing intestinal bile acid uptake. So um, this is uh, um, related to the so-called obeticolic acid, which is a very uh, hot molecule in the hepatology nowadays. Um, it's a uh, six ethylkinodeoxycholic acid semi-synthetic bile acid, uh, the first uh, which is, was primarily uh, developed for the treatment of primary biliary cholangitis, um, uh, but uh, because it's a strong uh, FXR agonist, uh, it has been also uh, uh, examined uh, in patients with uh, obesity, monoalcoholic hepatitis, and diabetes. The first paper was published in 2013 it was a small study showing uh, uh, improvement of, um, of uh, hepatic enzyme activities. And uh, um, uh, the next study was a uh, uh, famous Flint study, which was uh, a bigger one, having almost 300 uh, patients. And it also showed uh, that uh, patients um, uh, treated with obeticolic acid uh, improved their uh, hepatic enzyme activities, they improved their, uh, their uh, fibrotic score, uh, and they improved uh, uh, also the, uh, uh, the glucose homeostasis. Uh, so this is a follow-up of that FRIM study, uh, or follow-up, it's not a follow-up, it's a new study, but uh, following the, the pilot uh, results of the FRIM study, uh, this study is called REGENERATE, um, uh, the principal investigator is Vlad Ratziu, and um, uh, interim analysis um, at the months of 18 showed significant reduction uh, in hepatic enzyme activities as well as improvement in liver fibrosis. It's uh, I needed to say that uh, it's needed to say that uh, um, this is a large study having almost 1,000 patients. Uh, so, uh, a few words to ursodeoxycholic acid, because ursodeoxycholic acid is the most widely used bile acid uh, in a clinical medicine, and uh, um, uh, it's much cheaper than obeticolic acid. So, uh, the reason why I'm talking about this uh, bile acid is, is this. So, we know that it has anti-arrhythmogenic effects. We know it also from that uh, from those studies on ICP patients, those pregnant women with uh, intrahepatic cholestasis uh, of pregnancy. Um, we know that it can prevent ischemic reperfusion injury. Um, it can also protect um, uh, 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 cardiac uh, uh, transplant from rejections, and uh, it can improve peripheral blood flow in heart failure patients. Then we have a lot of studies, uh, uh, mostly experimental, showing that uh, it really improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, it um, uh, acts against metabolic syndrome. Um, uh, it has uh, effects on adiposity and inflammation. Uh, it can have uh, anti uh, oxidative stress or antioxidant effects. Um, uh, this is a human study uh, from Turkey showing that, that um, relatively short-term treatment of ursodeoxycholic acid uh, was able to revert um, uh, carotid atherosclerosis in the patients um, treated with ursodeoxycholic acid. And uh, uh, also it should be stressed that ursodeoxycholic acid doesn't have any, any agonistic effects on FXR but still it's able to stimulate incretin secretion uh, based on this uh, human study. And uh, uh, it's also important to mention that uh, there are, let's say, uh, interest to modify uh, chemically ursodeoxycholic acid um, scaffold to activate TGR5, um, which is depicted here. 
So there are multiple approaches how to do that, how to develop better drugs than we do have uh, at the moment. Uh, I mentioned nature, natural uh, uh, ligands uh, of bile acid receptors. One of the examples is oleanolic acid from olive tree leaves. And as you may see, there are papers showing that, um, that uh, uh, this uh, substance has uh, uh, anti-hyperglycemic activity. Uh, second example is betulinic acid, uh, which was isolated from the uh, birch tree bark. And again, we have, uh, we have uh, um, data showing that uh, this drug should be used or might be used uh, for treatment of, of diabetes. So uh, if you will look at the, uh, this web page, you may find this is uh, the data from yesterday, 133 clinical trials on bile acid metabolism being just registered. And uh, this is just a, just a random uh, selection of, of the studies uh, which you may find there. So there is a big research uh, uh, interest in, in this field. So to conclude, uh, let me say that there are no doubts about the metabolic effects of bile acids, um, which involve direct action on cardiovascular system, uh, which have also important impact on metabolism of energy sources, on pathogenesis of obesity, diabetes, and other metabolic and hormonal diseases. And, uh, uh, despite uh, uh, we feel that uh, bile acids uh, represent promising therapeutic target, we are still at the beginning of our understanding how to use them as possible uh, therapeutics for these diseases. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you to you, uh, Blibor. It was an excellent uh, talk. If you can uh, remove the screen so we can have a, a view yes. of all of us. I did. And I think I found your presentation uh, very, very exciting and very informative. So I'm opening the discussion. Please, anyone uh, in interested in, in uh, having a question or a comment to leave a presentation, please. Don't be shy. Hey, Labor, how's it going? Terry Hines. Hi, hi, Terry. Really nice talk, oh. uh, but you know I I I, I have I'm 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 favorite I have favoritism towards you so it's good. <laughs> um, I'm just curious, do you like because you've done some of the work with the um, the psilomerium B? Do you know if any of those um, kind of compounds can regulate the bile acids? So what kind of compounds? Like Belch thistle with psilomerium. Psilomerium. So, so we have, uh, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, pretty intensive research on on silymarine and and uh, silymarine complex flavonolignans, but we have um, never um, focused on bile acid metabolism. So I cannot uh, give you any data on that. But it's an interesting idea. Hmm. Yeah. Would be kind of neat. Thank you. Yeah. Really nice talk. Thanks. Any other comment? Oh, let me ask a, 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 a quick question. Uh, do you think that we can label bile acids as hormones? Yes, yes. It's not only my opinion. I think it's much more widely um, acknowledged in the, let's say, scientific community than for bilirubin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> because bilirubin is a hormone. Yeah. So I think that both, both compounds are uh, yes. working yes. together. Okay, any other question? Don't be shy, come on. Uh, well, uh, actually, did you, was you an author? I think you were an author on the recent paper where it showed uh, bile acids actually regulate bilirubin. That was a, you were an author on that paper, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, uh, this is what I just mentioned at the beginning that uh, we follow the both, um, let's say, metabolic pathways. And we know from the uh, history that in Gilbert syndrome, there is, uh, let's say, disturbed uh, bile acid metabolism. So these are old papers, uh, and I cannot say that the, the studies were well uh, performed, but uh, it just suggests that there might be a relationship uh, between these two pathways. So uh, I'm strong proponent of, let's say, um, interrelationship uh, between these two. 
You know, it's funny you brought up the bile acids today because, you know, you know, we talk, me, you and Claudia and Dave talk pretty often. And uh, my lab's been working the like uh, lipocholic acid, you know, the LCA, the kind of tertiary bile acid. We've been been function, working on that as a new ligand for probably this cancer pathway for another new receptor called GR beta. We've done some work on. Yeah. So do you, do you think that there's going to be a differential metabolism between like primary and secondary bile acids? Yeah, definitely. So lipocholic acid is uh, it's uh, just a minor bile acid which is elevated in, in patients with bacterial overgrowth in the, in the small intestine. Uh, as you just mentioned, this is the less polar, the least polar, uh, let's say, uh, endogenous bile acid, and it's uh, uh, the, more, the most carcinogenic bile acid. So we know that patients with colon cancer have, have elevated uh, levels of uh, lipocholic acid. But uh, I would say that uh, under the physiological conditions, um, uh, its effects, biological effects on other organs, tissues, uh, metabolic pathway is probably not uh, as important uh, as we can just uh, uh, expect in some pathological conditions. But this is just uh, the theoretical explanation uh, of what I think about this, uh, this topic. I don't have any data to, to just support my, my statement. Thank you very much, Libor. Uh, if there's no other question, I really stop here. 